Networking on a server is very important. This is how our server connects to the internet, other servers, and clients. Without network connection, our server can't do most of the things you would want a server to do. This is why we need to go ahead and configure networking. But before we do, let's take a look at our server and change its name from the default one because the default one's a little annoying. So let me go ahead and we're going to log in to our server with our super secret password that we created in the last lecture. And we're going to do this through server manager, which very conveniently pops up as soon as you log in. And we're going to go ahead and click local server and we can see all of our options right here on different things we can configure for this local server. So the first thing we notice in the top left hand corner we have computer name and it's win with a kind of random string of characters. We can change this by simply clicking on the name as you can see it's kind of like a hyperlink. Once we click it we're taken to the systems property page where we can see the information. Now if we click on this change button we're taken to where we can actually change the name of our server. So let's go ahead and we're going to change this to Learn Server 2019. We'll just kind of leave it the name that I named the actual virtual machine. And once we do that, we'll click OK. And it's going to tell us that before we can actually apply these changes, the computer's going to need to restart. So we're going to continue to have our old name until we actually reboot the computer. We'll say OK to that, and then we'll go ahead and click Close, and it's going to prompt us one more time to go ahead and restart. We're going to go ahead and restart now, and luckily through the beauty, again, of video editing, I'm going to speed everything up, and we'll be right back where we started to do our networking. Most home networks deploy what's called DHCP, so that a computer or server will get an address automatically. Typically in businesses, this is not the case because we want our servers to be addressed statically and not get a dynamic address. And that way we can access them every time through the same address. If you're not aware, DHCP is a service that most routers have, most home routers have, that can actually automatically assign IP addresses to computers. That way you don't have to worry about statically assigning them. It's great for client machines, but doesn't work incredibly well for servers. So in our example here, the network we're going to use starts with 192.168.10 and then the last piece of that IP address is the address that we're going to give our server, the specific number. For our server, we will be using 192.168.10.100. So to set this, it's very simple and there's multiple ways that you can do this. Um, there's multiple ways you can get to the settings page to do it and you can even do it through command line. One way is to actually go down here to the lower right hand corner where you can see your network and that it's unidentified. And if we right click on that guy, we can do open network and internet settings. Then we can click change adapter options. And then from here, we'll see all of the available network adapters that the server has. Now, since this is a virtual machine, I told it how many adapters that I wanted it to have. So we're only seeing one here. Now, if we were building a physical server, it's very possible we could see two or even more. Most physical server hardware comes with two network adapters, and some may even come with four. However, only one JJO is connected, assuming that you connected the server to a switch. Any network adapters that don't have a connection will show a red X on the adapter. To change the settings, we're going to simply right-click on the network adapter we want to configure, and we're going to choose Properties. So from here, we have two different types of IP addresses we can assign. The first is IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4, which is the typical IP addresses that we all know and love. The second is Internet Protocol version 6, or IPv6, which is the newer standard of IP addressing that the world is kind of switching to. IPv6 resembles more of a MAC address and gives us a very large number of possibilities for an IP address. However, we will be setting the IPv4 address because that's still the normal setup and my lab is not configured for IPv6 just yet. Now we click the Internet Protocol version 4 service here, making sure that we do not uncheck it because that will disable IPv4. Once it's selected, we choose Properties, and then we get a smaller window basically asking us for the information. 
So right now, it's selected to obtain an IP address automatically, which means it's set up to get a DHCP address, as we mentioned earlier. Well, we don't want this to happen, so we're going to choose use the following IP address. And in this case, we're going to type in the one that we decided, 192.168.10.100. Now we're going to put in our subnet mask. And for our subnet mask, we're going to do the default, which is 255, 255, 255, 0. The subnet mask is very important to understand when you get a little bit more into networking. And I'm certainly going to go over much of this in future courses and some other courses that I'll have up. But for now, just know that we need our network subnet mask to be 255, 255, 255, 0. So next we need to put in that default gateway we talked about, which is basically the router address that we have set up. And the one that I have set up is 192.168.10.1. So for example, let's say we have server A, server B, and server C. Server A and server B are on the same network. So they will talk directly to each other with, without a problem or needing a default gateway. Now we also have server C here, which is on a different network. In order for server A or server B to talk to server C, they must go through a router. To get to server C, and this router is the server's default gateway. So the router IP address is what we're going to set our server as the default gateway. Now, obviously I'm way oversimplifying how this routing works and how default gateway works in networking, but I just wanted to give you a very quick high-level example for those who are not familiar with networking or default gateway. So for us, that default gateway is going to be 192.168.10.1. The last thing we need to configure is the DNS server. Now, DNS, if you're not aware, stands for Domain Name System, and it's basically a way of taking easily remembered names like Google.com or thesysadminschool.com and changing those into not so easily remembered IP addresses. So we're going to select use the following DNS server addresses which was selected automatically for us when we turned off DHCP. And we have the option of setting a primary and a backup basically so we set the primary and if for whatever reason we can't access that it's going to fail over to the second one which gives us redundancy. And in a business environment, this is going to typically be your internal DNS servers. But for our example here, we're going to use Google's public DNS servers. So those are 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. Now that we have all that set up, we should be able to access the internet. So we're going to go ahead and just click OK. And then we're going to click Close. And we can see that we're connected because it's asking if I want to connect to other networks or other PCs in my network. I'm going to go ahead and say no. And we're going to confirm that we're connected to the internet by bringing up a command prompt. And I'm just going to use PowerShell here. And we're going to simply ping. And basically a ping is like sonar. <laughs> we're going to send a ping out. And if it hits something, it's going to send a response back to ping. 8.8.8.8 .8 .8. and you can see we're getting a reply from 8.8.8.8 .8 the other way we can confirm now that DNS is working is we're gonna ping google.com and what you'll see is google.com gets resolved to an actual IP address that is what we then ping so because that we actually resolved it to an IP address we know that our DNS is configured appropriately so there you have it. We have successfully configured networking on our Windows Server 2019 server. In the next lecture, we're going to be configuring RDP for remote desktop and looking at sconfig.